Good morning. OTC has always placed a lot of importance on good staff communications. And although we've tried hard in the past, we never seem to have got it quite right. So this year we're trying something new, the OTC video show. Now it's a show designed to inform you, to have you recognise other people in the organisation and what they do, and hopefully to entertain you as well. It's a series of shows and they'll occur at two or three monthly intervals. The idea is to put you, to put the staff in the picture so that you'll have a better understanding of what other people do and I hope you'll better understand what the organisation is all about. You might call it a few days in the life of OTC. OTC's newest satellite air station was officially opened on May the 14th, 1984 at the Hilton Hotel in Melbourne. We've got the launching of the Melbourne Satellite Earth Station here today as well as a press conference. So in that, in that essence, we've got two functions going on here at the one time today. The reason why we're holding it here in Melbourne instead of Hillsville is because of the number of people we've got here today. From a logistic point of view, it's far better if we have them centralised here in Melbourne rather than put them in a whole lot of cars or buses and take them out to Hillsville. It's a, uh, it's a new service that, um, that OTC is, is announcing today. We're, uh, we're setting up a, uh, a satellite earth station for Victorian people. It's the first time that a satellite earth station has been built in Victoria. And from that point, it's, 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 it's important that everything goes correct here today. Having a look at what's going on around us now, uh, one would uh, assume that uh, we wouldn't be ready in time, but uh, uh, experience in this matter suggests that, uh, that the panic before the, uh, before the event is quite normal under these circumstances. A highlight of the opening ceremony was a telecast from the Olympic Games Committee's Senior Vice President, Joel Rubenstein, in Los Angeles. Channel 10 provided the crew and facilities to help OTC bring the telecast from Healesville to the Hilton. With such a complex technical operation, there were several last-minute problems to test the professionalism of the people involved. We've got ours already set up, but we need someone to just say, oh, this is the loose. Yeah, I might have a crook cable here, Ray. If it is, I'll, I'll have to apologise for the fish. Thank you, Jack. That is a confusion, baby. The backroom boys did their job well, and the ceremony went ahead as planned. I'll now introduce the chairman of OTC, Mr. Bob, Bob Somerville. And Mr. Duffy, Mr. Smith, Mr. Patching. I guess as chairman of OTC, most people regard OTC as being a Sydney-based organisation and that most of our activities are centralised in that area. Bob Somerville was followed by Communications Minister Michael Duffy. I must say that there are many uh, things which you remember in a portfolio and many things that you carry out, but I must say that today is one that uh, I will remember with great satisfaction because it's something which people in Victoria, those who are in the communications area, are very conscious of the significance of it today. They have expressed privately to me uh, at that level and at the Victorian government level their delight at what is taking place today and it is with great satisfaction. Uh, that I am here. I thank OTC and everyone else associated with it for the fact that we are
today able to officially open the Melbourne Earth Station. Thank you. It just simply remains for me to, to thank some of the people that were involved in the uh, getting the Earth Station on time because we've done it very quickly. Uh, and to Telecom through Bill Pollock, I'd like to say thanks. We couldn't have done it without their assistance. I want to thank Channel 10 for bringing the, uh, uh, the broadcast down to the Hilton today. Again, we would have been in great difficulty without their assistance. And also to uh, Harris Communications, who've uh, been the contractors for the Earth Station. Well, let's see if we've got our money's worth as we see the Hillsville Earth Station in use for the first time. The picture's a great picture, by the way, that's come over, Joel. You're looking uh, just about good enough to get into Hollywood from where I'm standing. And uh, so it says a great deal. It says a great deal for the new Earth Satellite Station. And um, it will, of course, provide a tremendous opportunity for everybody here in Australia to view the Olympic Games. We asked OTC staff at Healesville how the telecast was arranged. Last night we pre-tested the, the carrier system so that we could say that the picture quality would be good at Healesville Earth Station. We fed one of these links to the uh, Channel 10 outside broadcast van, which was beamed straight across to the Healesville, the, the Melbourne Hilton. But what about the Earth Station itself? We asked project engineer Bernie Seth why the Healesville site was chosen. Hillsville was chosen as the site uh, because uh, of its um, immunity to radio frequency interference. This particular valley here is surrounded by hills, as you can see, and, and trees, and uh, this makes it a very uh, attractive place to put in an earth station because it uh, cuts out a lot of unwanted uh, interference. The antenna itself is an 18.3 meter standard Cassegrainian dish. Uh, it consists of an <coughs> aluminium main reflector supported by a galvanized steel king post pedestal. The Hillsville installation teams had organised their own unofficial opening ceremony, a tribute to everyone involved. Wives, girlfriends and families, everyone was there. They even had a christening cake. Here you go, sweetheart. I thought there'd be somebody else. Here you go. <laughs> We're all gathered here virtually to have an unofficial opening of this wonderful earth session which uh, we've been uh, planning and installing over the last six and a half months. It's been tremendous working with everyone here and uh, under pressure, I think we've all come through with the goods. Uh, the official opening, which took place at the Hilton this morning, I believe that the picture was of uh, considerable good quality. And the credit for that goes largely to uh, the uh, efforts of everyone here virtually over the last two and a half weeks. And uh, without much further ado, so I'll ask our manager here to open the, uh, cut the ribbon, open the station and cut the cake. <laughs> One small slip, slip for mankind. <laughs> Back. Here to go. Stand back. Hello, here we Games will no doubt be the event of 1984, with many Australian athletes making that extra effort for their country. Unfortunately, the lightweight eights rowing event is not included in this year's Games, otherwise OTC's Dale Caterson would be there. Instead, Dale and his crew are training for the World Rowing Championships to be held in Montreal. We managed to catch up with them for a few brief moments during an early morning training stint on Melbourne's famous Yarra River. Dale is the cox of this year's Australian team. He works for OTC in Sydney as acting plank controller, but was in Melbourne for a three-month training camp before the World Championships. Training for the lightweight eight championships in Montreal. It's a world lightweight rowing championships. Uh, it's a little bit different than the Olympic Games, where the rowers have to have an average weight of 70 kilos throughout the eight, which is around about 
uh, Levenstone 4 or something like that. I've uh, been coxing nine years now. I uh, first started off in St George Rowing Club in Sydney, then transferred to Sydney Rowing Club. And uh, this is my first Australian team. I've had about four New South Wales teams and a couple of trips to New Zealand. It's quite an enjoyable experience. It takes up a lot of time. Um, we've got plenty of training. Training at least six days a week, all day weekends. You get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's good, meet a lot of nice people. Overseas telecommunications pass through OTC's gateway terminals at Broadway and Paddington. The Broadway terminal also houses OTC's telecommunications exhibition, where every weekday, school children and adult groups learn how we communicate with the world. We ask public relations assistant Judy Lynch what was involved in publicising the exhibition. It's um, taken a long time to get where we are as far as compiling a mailing list the size of the one that we have, um, establishing a number of contacts, particularly within the schools areas. We get a lot of return visits year after year. People have been impressed the first time and keep on bringing different classes back. Um, <clears throat> it means sort of uh, establishing a fairly good relationship too with the, with the advertising agency so that they can get a feel of exactly what we need to put in any of our um, new literature and what have you. But it usually uh, the ideas usually have to come from here um, and then we sort of try and put it into poster form or whatever. Good afternoon ladies and welcome to OTC. I'm sure that you'll enjoy what we have to show you this afternoon and learn a little bit about overseas telecommunications while you're here. It's a multivision presentation. Judy welcomes each group in the theatrette where she explains the dynamic 20-minute multivision presentation they're about to see. 15 projectors that are synchronized together to create an illusion of motion on the screen. For nearly 40 years, OTC has charted a course through the maze of technological advances. Keeping our communication capacity in line with an ever-growing demand. Ensuring an unbroken link to the world by undersea cables and satellites. From the multivision to the exhibition. The first year, I came in the June, and at the end of that year we had an excess of 7,000 through the area. And uh, for the following 12 months there was uh, over 16,000 people came through. And this year we're anticipating in excess of 16,000. The group this afternoon was more of a general interest group. They were interested in um, having a look around at various workplaces. Uh, they're doing a preparation for employment course at Tech, uh, and they do all sorts of things like basic secretarial and office skills, that sort of thing. And they just came for a look around. If they're full styling up with light and operate up, they need operator assistance for the call. It's important for OTC to create a public awareness of the Commission and its services. The multivision presentation and exhibition are vital in this regard. And by looking at different work areas, public groups are able to communicate direct with OTC staff, building an understanding and rapport which can only be mutually beneficial. It's going, it's going through London into Nigeria. If I go by Zurich, it'll go through Zurich into Nigeria as well. So we're actually getting into the country. We can do what's so happening this, again. So possibly the Tilix, that they, the number that they're trying to get, is has something going That's through right, at the yeah. moment. Informing the public as to how OTC operates is important. But OTC staff need that knowledge too. This video show will partly satisfy that need. 
Another, perhaps more familiar way, is Transit, OTC's staff magazine. A popular feature with Transit readers is the cryptic crossword. How do you go about solving them? And who is Bob Symes? We found the answers at OTC's Melbourne office. A lot of the feedback I've had with doing this crossword is that a lot of people feel that they can't, they can't do the uh, uh, a cryptic crossword. They take one look at it and they freak out because um, I've noticed a lot of people that do cryptic crosswords, it's sort of a status thing with them. If you can do a cryptic crossword, you're a little bit above the person that can only do the ordinary crossword, and, and, and really that's rubbish. All you have to do is to learn the, the, the rules that there are to it. You just have to learn um, how devious some of the compilers can be. On the crossword number seven that I did in, in transit, is, which is one which I had a lot of, a lot of um, comment from people that have done it, they said it was too hard for them and um, they wanted me to explain how I got some of the answers. And I'll give an example of uh, number 15 across. It says, American girl cut off during a horse ride. Now, a lot of cryptic compilers use that American girl or American boy. An American girl, um, in America they say gal, she's a gal. So that's G-A-L. To cut something off, you lop it off, so it's L-O-P, which gives you the answer to that, which is gallop. Eight across, the provisionals, in, the provisionals question in the Middle East. I'm telling you that the answer is something to do with the Middle East. I'm telling you that the provisionals, which the IRA, the question, so the IRA question, which is I-R-A-Q, which is the first letter of, of question, the answer is Iraq, which is in the Middle East. Actually, a lot of people got that one, um, uh, when I had all the queries on this one. That's one that, that a lot of people did, did tend to get. Still in the dark? Bob told us of his plans to help transit readers. To try and sort this out with the, with the readers of, of transit, um, I'm going to do a series of articles on how to solve cryptic crossword puzzles. What I intend doing is taking, say, three or four clues from each month's crossword and showing them exactly how you take it from there. After having read that and um, practiced a little bit, um, I think that um, a lot of people will find they're really very easy and um, they're great enjoyment to do. OTC's Coast Radio Service has a network of stations around Australia's coastline supplying telecommunications services to the maritime community. Good afternoon. Could you spell your vessel's name for me, please, and could I have your accounting code? Over. At the Sydney Coast Radio Station, we asked manager John Clendinning about CRS life in the high-tech 1980s. How have satellite communications affected the Coast Radio Service? Indirectly. We don't know if um, our overseas connections are going by satellite or cable. Uh, however, we do have access to the satellites for radio telephone subscribers who wish to make a radio telephone call by satellite, by InnoSat. Uh, Radphones is a term used to um, designate uh, high frequency radio telephones. There is another service uh, which is known as C-Phones. The C-Phone service is uh, similar to Radphones as we term them, but it's conducted entirely on VHF high quality services and at short range. It's used by the small craft, pleasure craft, and it's also used by the deep sea craft when they are close in and within our range. And then we asked how the safety of life at sea service operates. We maintain continuous watch, that's 24 hours a day, on four SOLAS frequencies as we call them, listening for people who might be in trouble or in potential trouble and we note this down and we advise um, if it's within the confines of Sydney Harbour we advise the water police if it's outside of Sydney Harbour we advise the Australian Coastal Surveillance Centre in Canberra. Transport Minister Peter Morris. When you need help on the road you go to the nearest phone box but Australia's longest highway isn't a road it's our coastline and out here it's a long swim to a phone box. Our safety of life at sea program ensures that when you make a call you know there's always someone listening because the Overseas Telecommunications Commission, through its network of coast radio stations, monitors marine radio channels 24 hours a day. As well as broadcasting.
A station providing such essential services can't afford to be off the air. We went to the heart of Sydney Radio, the equipment room. Behind me here is the equipment which joins up with Brinjelli for our receivers, uh, Doonside for our transmitters and our uh, telex lines which go to Paddington and uh, Broadway all leave the station from this area here. Uh, when the technicians aren't here, the supervisors have to try and keep things on the air, but uh, the technicians do all the maintenance and keep the station alive. 